with some analysis now on how the Murdochs did today. I'm joined from Toronto by crisis management consultant Alan Bonner. Alan, good to see you again. Good evening. Your thoughts overall on Murdoch's appearance today? Well, I would say it's not good enough, and I am a tough audience because I help prepare witnesses uh, some of the time for a living. I don't think they looked uh, contrite enough. I don't think they said they were sorry enough. I thought the body language, especially by Mr. Rupert Murdoch, was too crotchety. Uh, and he didn't reach out uh, adequately. Don't forget, this is a rehearsal for the testimony they may give in the United States in front of a congressional committee under oath with the staff lawyers on the committee. It's going to be a tougher, uh, tougher uh, act uh, than this one. All right, uh, too crotchety, interesting. Well, Alan, I want to show our viewers how Murdoch and Rebecca Brooks responded to questions about Millie Dowler and her family. Of course, this is what set this whole scandal in motion. Let's listen. I was absolutely shocked, appalled and ashamed when I heard about the Millie Dowler case only two weeks ago, eight, eight days before I saw them. It was graciously received by the Dowlers. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would authorise, know, sanction, approve of anyone listening to the voicemails of Millie Dowler in those circumstances. I just, just don't know anyone who would think it was a right and proper thing to do at this time or at any time. So, Alan, there are a lot of questions, a lot of debate people are having about whether a person in Murdoch's position or Rebecca Brooks' position has a responsibility to know what's going on. What did you make of their statements and where does the buck stop? Well, those were among the right words to say. I'm shocked and appalled and sorry and so on. However, in 1964, Rupert Murdoch uh, made his reputation in part by publishing the diary of a 13-year-old girl that had some sexual fantasies in it, and a young boy committed suicide. Decades later, a Top of the Pops uh, BBC popular music program had a dancer on it. He published her diary, and she committed suicide. So long before there was cell phones and voicemail, um, Mr. Murdoch was not shocked at finding and publishing private information. So uh, this is the kind of cross-examination that he may get in uh, the U.S. rather than the U.K. And I don't know why someone didn't follow up on that because those are, are relatively well-known stories. So Mr. Murdoch said today that he's the right man to clean up this mess. Is he or is he just too close to it? Uh, well, you know, in, in my little business, I think I'm the right man for a lot of jobs as well. In other words, he would say that, wouldn't he? Now, you asked a good question. I'm sorry I didn't answer it. Uh, does the buck stop with him? Sure. I think that the average person, notwithstanding uh, uh, walls of, of uh, limited companies and incorporated companies and wh what have you, I think most people would think that the chief executives set a particular tone in an organization. And uh, this is, um, I, I think, going to keep dogging him. I don't think he's going to get away with saying, I didn't know there were others, uh, they've left the ship. Hmm. Ignorance is not a defense. So where do they go from here, day two tomorrow? Well, it's absolutely fascinating because these stories, the very de definition of a crisis is a rapidly evolving event that taxes all your resources to deal with it. Uh, there are investigations going on on both sides of the Atlantic. There may even be some new law uncovered when you hack a cell phone. Or is it an offense where the cell is, where the handheld device is, where the secondary carrier is? I'm speaking of the Jude Law case, of course. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, tomorrow's testimony is going to reveal more about these people. I thought, for example, when the fake pie almost hit Mr. Mm -hmm. Murdoch, that his son probably should have asked for a recess and I think that that would have been a completely reasonable request. So I'm wondering why they weren't more prepared, looking more comfortable and confident, fewer I don't knows and I'll get back to you. My goodness, if this is how much they prepared over the weekend, they need to do more for the U.S. cases. Alan Bonner, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your insight into this. Good night.